a win. Uh, I don't know by knockout or submission. That's what I'm gonna go for. But uh, I expect five five minute round of, of uh, war at very high pace. It is the one we have waited our entire lives for. Good day. What is going on, Arkansas? It is that time again for some MMA news and all types of great stuff. Today, we've got a packed day, and it's going to be nuts. I've got some big stuff. I want everybody to be, yeah, tune in, tune up. Don't tune out. Right here on KLRG 880 AM, 94.5 FM, streaming around the world on KLRG880.com. Well, I've got some news to go over with you. Sports, mixed martial arts, all types of stuff. This week, I'm telling you, it's been awesome. We got big news coming here today on the show. We shall start off with some headline news. The Associated Press has reported Hall of Fame catcher Gary Carter has passed away at the age of 57. The Hall of Fame catcher, who's single for the Mets in the 1986 World Series, touched off one of the most improbable rallies in baseball. Carter was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor last May, two weeks after finishing his second season as coach at Palm Beach Atlantic University. Mets spokesman Jay Horowitz said Carter died at a hospice in West Palm Beach, Florida. Well, that was the somber part of the day. I mean, he was great. Uh, I remember being a kid watching those World Series. It was huge. So those were back in the days of Doc Gooden. Some of the other great players of the Mets team right there. Later on in the show, we're going to have some good controversial talk going on. There's so much going on here in Arkansas. And I've got somebody going to be talking to me here shortly about some of the big stuff going on in MMA. Well, Peyton Manning, the Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Irsay, has indicated on Thursday night to WISH-TV Channel 8 that he and quarterback Peyton Manning are re already in negotiations regarding Manning's future with the team. This is from a KNFPost.com, also reported on Yahoo. They say that they talk a lot, and it's probably not always going to be what people think we might talk about. Very recently, we got into a day debate about will Tiger Woods win more majors than Jack Nicholas or not? You know, there's so much stuff going on with Peyton Manning right now. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? He's now, now, it's been revealed he had a third surgery. For all you Colts fans out there, and for football fans around, I don't think Peyton Manning should play again, personally speaking. Now, it's one thing to come back from an injury. It's another thing to come back from having three neck surgeries. And the dangers of being a professional quarterback, look, he gets, a, a, all it takes is one play, one play where he's not protected, where he gets hit from behind really, really hard, sacked really hard, it could permanently paralyze him. Who wants to, <laughs> look, your life and your ability to walk are not worth any money. I, I don't care. He's made millions of dollars. He's won national championships. There is no necessity whatsoever for Peyton Manning to ever put another helmet on. I think he should move forward as a coach or as a quarterback coach. He's a very, very intelligent man, and so I know that he could probably put on to some really wonderful offenses. He could be an offensive coordinator for any of these NFL teams. He could go coach in college football. Peyton Manning could do anything he wants at this point in time, but I don't understand why he would ever want to come back and play professional football. I understand, oh, there's a passion for it. There's a love for the game, and there's the, the incredible amount of money involved. But is it worth the ability to walk? No. There's no coming back from paralysis. So my words, my thing out to Peyton Manning, sir, I believe you should hang it up because everybody knows that 
The Colts are going to have the number one draft pick in this upcoming draft. There's only one logical answer that's going to the Colts, and that would be Mr. Andrew Luck coming from Stanford. Some people had a little rumor that RG3 would be going, but no. Trust me on this one. Number one pick in the draft will hands down be Andrew Luck. He will be the next Peyton Manning. Andrew Luck has the skills and ability to come into the NFL and and set a Hall of Fame pace. Now, at the end of last season, though, RG3, Robert Griffin from Baylor, also proved that he's going to be the real deal in the NFL. But I believe Peyton Manning needs to hang it up. Other talks this week in headline sports. Well, there's a big name going around right now in the NBA. Well, that would be Mr. Lynn. <laughs> Jeremy Lynn, that is, from the New York Knicks. One word, beast. <laughs> this young guy, you know, there's all this weird controversy. You're going to read about all this weird stuff on online about, oh, you know, he's this Asian kid. Asian. Look, he's American. He's, a, he's an American-born guy who pretty much made a name for himself about a little over a week ago when they played when the Knicks played against the Lakers and he pretty much made Kobe Bryant look elementary <laughs> pretty much there was there's no getting around the fact if you could sit there and make Kobe Bryant look like Kobe's back in college uh going to be kind of tough to not get make a huge name for yourself so follow him and another thing i read online too people were talking about LeBron James Open to returning to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Hmm. That sparks up some good debate because, well, I don't know if Cleveland would want him back. You know, some of the people might think, oh, yeah, it'd be great to come. Look, the city of Cleveland was mad, furious when he left. They yanked down posters, signs, all types of stuff. You are not going <laughs> to – I do not see LeBron James being welcomed back to the Cleveland Cavaliers at all. Not happening. Well, there's some other good stuff going on here at KLRG and the fifth round. And I have to do something right now to start it off this is this is something I put together this morning, especially for you listeners out there. So right now, turn up your radio. The biggest announcement in the history of the show, in the, the ever brief history we've had so far of this show, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the fifth round cage, professional fighter, certified martial arts instructor, fight promoter, and fitness guru. The new heavyweight champion of radio, a soldier for Christ, and now the new co-host for the fifth round, Nathan, the Tasmanian Devil, Kirby! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nathan Kirby, co-host of the show. Good morning, my brother. Let's start this party. <laughs> Sir, I put that thing together just for you this morning. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> that was hilarious. One of my favorite movies of all time. Man, just off the chain. Ladies and gentlemen, all right. Full change going on right here at KLRG and on this show, the fifth round. As of last night, our the following on Facebook is just exploding. It's going off the chain. This show will continue on and is going to continue to grow. And now, as of right now, because of Nathan Kirby being on this show with me, it will do nothing but go off like a nuclear bomb. Boo! Oh, I'm so excited, so pumped up. If you were one of the thousands that were in attendance last Saturday night, Kingdom Promotions put on probably in my opinion the best MMA show I've seen in the state of Arkansas to date. Yes sir. Period. <clears throat> it was huge. It was so big they cut people off at the door. You couldn't get a ticket at the door anymore because it was wall to wall people. The fights were 
phenomenal. Unbelievable decision, decision, another decision. You know that's that's Knock one of the out. big things. No. <laughs> Knockouts. Knock out. And you know the sad fact is, I ran out of the house this morning and my stack of papers from the fights. I had all the fighter cards in my hand. Ran out of the house, sitting on my dresser. No. All my notes. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, who won? Oh wait. And I want. I'll give this out. And here's a big shout out to to one of the fighters from that night. Um, I didn't realize before the fight started that we had one of the cast members from 300 get to be fighting. I said Spartacus. <laughs> Spartacus himself. Bobby Oler, that dude is a monster. <laughs> and we came out, I'm like, yeah, wow. So I called all those fights. So the DVD will be available. We will be keeping you informed when the DVD is available, where you can purchase that DVD at, of 18 incredible fights from Saturday night's event, Valentine's Massacre. It was crazy. Uh, before we delve into some, some of that stuff, I want to talk about there's – Two massive signings that happened this week. One yesterday for MMA. The first one, Legacy Fighting Championships, has signed jiu-jitsu ace Robert Drysdale. Man, he's 80. Robert Drysdale <laughs> is... He's a beast. He is a monster. Legacy promoter Mick Maynard today told, yesterday told MMA Junkie at MMAJunkie.com about the signing. Although an opponent has, has not been finalized for the BJJ Black Belt, Drysdale is expected to debut for the organization's Legacy Fighting Championships 11 event, which airs live on HDNet. Okay, the show takes place on May 11th at Houston's Arena Theater. There's going to be a couple other fights he got going on that night. Featherweights, uh, Chad Rubido and Joseph Sandoval are also booked to fight at the show. A multi-time jiu-jitsu world champion, Robert Drysdale, who's 3-0, and made his pro MMA debut in 2010 and since has posted three first-round submission victories. Most recently, he choked out former UFC fighter Mike Nichols in 64 seconds at June's Armageddon Fighting Championships event in Canada. In addition to his own career, Drysdale has been a central figure in the training of notables such as Forrest Griffin, Martin Kampman, Evan Dunham and Frank Mir. Legacy recently has sent some of its top fighters to major promotions. For example, middleweight champ Andrew Craig recently signed to fight Kyle Noak in March at UFC on FX2. And we got the phones blowing up already. Well, the thing is with, with uh, Drysdale, he was actually the coach for Forrest Griffin, um, the UFC light heavyweight champion at one point. Um, it was way back in um, UFC. It was a countdown to UFC 101. And uh, Robert Drysdale, he was the coach of Forrest Griffin. Um, he was selected as a coach for the Ultimate, Fight, uh, Ultimate Fighter Season 8 when uh, Frank Mir was on there. So it, it's going to be really cool. Actually, uh, you know, we're here. We're going to blow this whole MMA thing up. Local, state, regional, national. This is kind of a regional deal. Legacy is going to be in Houston, Texas. It is regional. Definitely yeah, so it's going to be, what is it, May? May 11th. May 11th. And I think the next Kingdom show that's going to be around here is going to be May 5th, you know, either Cabot or Conway. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not going to hit on that. And then there's another um, there's another UFC supposed to be coming to, uh, I think, Memphis or, or can, I have to look Memphis that up. Memphis or again. Nashville. Yeah, we're, I'll, we'll be getting on that here. In there's a, a Naga's second. coming to Memphis. Naga Memphis is coming Let's see, you got Naga Nashville at the end of next month, and then I believe June 2nd is Naga in Memphis. <laughs> right now, we have a caller on the line. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Nathan. Hello, sir. How you doing? It's John. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I am so pumped that you're on the radio, that you're promoting MMA in the state of Arkansas. That last show you had was just uh, awesome. I mean, we were tr you were turning people away from the door, man. It was just unbelievable. Man. I think the... I think the fire marshal was a little upset because you had probably about 1,000, 1,200 people there. <laughs> yeah. Man, that means a lot, too, because, um, you know, that's the thing. This isn't about, uh, this isn't about me. Um, I, I'm, I'm not telling you about my family. This isn't about my uh, – this isn't about me. This isn't about Craig. Uh, that show was not about me. We highlighted all these guys. I mean, you got to see some of the best guys – from West Side, some of the pro fighters there. You got to see some of the guys from Hot Springs who's never even fought before. This is all about this sport, growing this sport the way it needs to be. This is not about money. 
This is not about money. I don't care about that. I, I just don't care about it. We have got to do something, us together, the fans, the fighters, the coaches. We've got to do something to keep growing this sport so we can pop on the radar like Las Vegas. You think UFC? What do you think? Vegas. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, big time. I, I just just the promotions in in Arkansas that uh, that are, are that are popping up. That you know, dealing with you and uh, it's just awesome, man. I mean, uh, the uh, the that last fight you had on that that Lindsey Gifford fight. Oh wow! I had my Facebook. I had over three hundred hits on my Facebook alone in, in one day. My phone is blown up. People are going crazy over this rematch. Oh, you know? April fourteenth. April fourteenth. Yes, sir. I'm. Uh, you know. I, Lindsay has, has, has called me probably 20 times. Gifford's called me about 10 times. I mean, the, the fans have, have blown up my phone. I, 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 and I, I didn't get to meet with you yesterday because I was, I was swamped, but, uh, and I was going to counsel with you on it, but uh, I was going to get your take on it and, and, uh, and see what you thought about that. Well, you know, uh, okay, as far as the David Lindsay Thomas, uh, the young line Gifford, listen, Thomas is up and coming. This is what I said. I told this to his coach. This is me from a promoter, okay? Uh, I mean, me as a coach and promoter, it's hard. You know, it's the different hats that we wear. Um, I believe that Thomas won. He, he got a submission. It wasn't like he eked out a decision or it was controversial. He got a complete submission. David tapped, triangle choke. If David wants to fight Thomas again, then David needs to fight somebody and beat somebody and earn his fight with Thomas. That's always been me. I wouldn't let somebody fight Chitwood unless, they, unless Chitwood lost his title or unless this guy beat somebody to get to Chitwood again. Does that make sense? Yeah, But if sense. the fans are wanting this, David doesn't want the loss. Okay, their team doesn't want the loss. Strike while the iron is hot. That's what Rolly said to me. I completely understand that and agree. On both sides, as a promoter, heck yeah. When you got one of the biggest fights that went down in, in, in MMA in, in Arkansas, I mean, a great, amazing professional fight throw down, and the fans want it, strike. Strike now because you're going to have another amazing show on your hand. So I go back and forth with it. I say, I think David needs to earn a fight. I think Thomas needs to move on and then wait for David to come back. But if, if they both want it, Thomas thinks this is good for his career. David gets a shot at redemption, and it's going to blow up your show. Go for it. But now here's a question, though. I am thinking about this. Uh, Thomas Gifford, he's been on a hot streak. He really is. This is his, uh, I believe, third win in a row as a pro. Uh, he had a he had a good amateur career, and great great amateur career. great amateur career. And the thing is, is do you want to? Does it as a fighter? Does it make you actually kind of step back a little bit if you if you take on that same fight again like you just did, or do you push forward? And I think that's something that maybe the fighter needs to ask himself, talk to his coaches, because do you want really want on this pro record if you're shooting for a tie, a shot at Bellator or any of these other fight promotions? Um, do you take the opportunity as you as it as it happens now and keep char keep charging forward, or do you go fight again? Does it does if you fight him again and, and win or lose, do you still move forward, or is it less of a step forward? Well, well, go ahead, John. Uh, I see what you're saying, and I understand that. Uh, and, and and Kirby, I mean, you fought, I fought. Uh, uh, I've dealt with the West Side uh, group. Good bunch of guys, Raleigh Delgado, Matt Hamilton, awesome Jim. Um, you know, I've used their other fighters on my shows, and I've, I've actually read them on your show. Uh, I thought about it, slept slept on it overnight, and uh, and you know talked with Bob, my business partner, and we're going to go ahead. And I talked to Thomas, and right? I talked to Thomas Senior. Um, you know, they, Thomas Junior really wants to fight that way, Johnson, even though he's an O and O fighter, uh, but he's still an undefeated amateur. And uh, he wants that fight also. I, I've been in the talks with Adam Schindler. He's a 10 and 3 fighter out of out of uh, Texas. Is really really good fighter. Um, and and they want that fight. But I, I got to give Arkansas what they want. And I'm going to give them the David Lindsay fight. Um, you know. Um, and, and he's also got Wade Johnson on the radar. Even though everybody says, well, he's an 0 and 0 guy. Well, he, he, Thomas wanted to re refight a few other fighters out of Willie McLaughlin's gym and didn't get a chance because Thomas did turn pro. So, well, I think uh, what you should do is you should talk to that guy from Texas. You should have Wade as the undercard. That way, whoever wins, whoever wins, will be able to fight Thomas. Or if they have to prove themselves, then they have to fight David to get to Thomas. Because yeah. they're still talking. Well, I mean, if you talk to Matt, yeah. Rowley, David Lindsay, 
they are saying there is going to be a rubber match. There is going to be a third fight because they know in their hearts and their minds that they're going to beat Thomas Gifford. Gifford. So right. they're already thinking they're going to beat him. I, I mean, I mean, obviously, why would you fight him if you didn't think that in the first place, right? That's what we're supposed right. to do as fighters. So right, right. I, I would have, I would have whoever wins, Wade Johnson or this well, kid from Texas, whoever well, wins. Dave, Dave, go Dave ahead. Blow's throwing his name in the hat now. He's a one and one pro, but had a real good amateur career. Who? He's won the Thomas fight. Uh, Dave Burrow out of the Batesville. And I was like, well, what if I put Dave Burrow and Wade Johnson together, and then the winner of that gets to fight Thomas on the next fight after the David Lindsay fight? And that's what I was looking at. Who did Burrow fight down in Hot Springs a couple months ago? Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, God, if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. Uh, I can't remember who it was. I can't remember either. Well, I think it'll be a good fight. I mean, um, April 14th, um, I think it's going to be at the convention center. Um, right. I, I mean, how many other pros do you have lined up on that? Um, well, I mean, I was looking at Kim Hamby, but she's got a pulled hamstring. She's out. Uh, uh, She's just now starting to be the main again. event with David. I'm probably gonna. I'm looking at maybe Wade Johnson and Dave Burroughs as the semi main, and just have two pro fights, and then go. I got two amateur title fights in, in the works, and then probably have about 15 fights two together total. What is that day? Is that buggy day? What What is that day called down there? That is a Derby Day. There's derby be Day. Probably derby. about 40,000 people in town for the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, so I think that'd be a good weekend for people to get down there. It's going to be a great show. Um, uh, now, the John, I'm just going to take over here, okay? All right. All right, here's the deal. Down in Hot Springs, um, I've had uh, four phone calls yesterday about it. Uh, I was texting a few people about April 14th. So let me tell everybody. Um, somebody talked to me on the phone. She's probably listening now and said she'll probably never go to Hot Springs again for a fight. Let me. This is not the same Hot Springs show that was there two months ago. This is going to be completely different. This is going to be, especially with the Athletic Commission in, that's a whole other controversy we had to go through. This is going to be a completely different show down there, 100% professional, ran amazing, just like what we did down, down here at the Metroplex last weekend is going to be just like that. It's going to be a professional production. It's going to be off the chain. They're going to pull out the stops. They, they're really going to make this show big, and they're going to tear Hot Springs up, and that's the way it should be. Well, here in Arkansas, here in Arkansas, look, we, we talk about the growth of the mixed martial arts, of martial arts in general. I don't care if it's Taekwondo, Thai boxing, boxing, wrestling. Uh, the only way that this stuff grows is if you attend, if you partake. You have to go check these out. Go support these young fighters. You want to see your friends and you want to see these guys that you've seen in the gyms reach the pinnacle of their MMA careers, you have to attend. Well, Miss, Mr. Munns, like, we greatly appreciate your call this morning, sir. I think he's ordering food. Oh. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> well, so, but to get back to it, we need to, we need to attend. Look, that, that event on Saturday went off the charts, okay? We have to keep these going. In, in, in order for uh, Kingdom Promotions or any of the fights in Hot Springs, in order for the, any of these promoters to continue to promote, Hot Springs is not very far. It is not very far from the Little Rock area. If you want to take a quick little trip for a wonderful evening, go check out some awesome fights. Nathan, when's that? When's those fights again? April 14th. April 14th. It's going to be different. It's going to be a different show. Um, they've had some issues down there in the past, and, and they said they're done. Um, you know, we've got some other businesses down there and other guys that are just – just like you, Craig, just like these people that have just wrapped themselves around me and said, listen, we want to help. We want to make this thing right. We want to do this right. We want to build this. We don't care about us. We don't care about the money. Let's just do this right. That's what's going on down there. There's some people that are wrapping themselves around John and Bob, and they are going to blow this thing up. Yeah. Well, and everybody needs to get involved. And an easy way to get involved for anybody who doesn't know how, uh, one, you need to get online. You could check us out on Facebook. Check out the fifth round. Uh, we will always, between Nathan and I, we will always be putting up uh, new information all the time throughout the day. Uh, he posts on there. I post on there. And if you want to be caught up on what's going on, uh, I definitely want to get everybody involved. Uh, Naga tournaments, North American Grappling Association. You can, If you want to go check out a, just a jiu-jitsu tournament, you can go to one of these tournaments and go check one out for like five bucks. 
you know, walk in and watch some phenomenal jiu-jitsu. If you've never uh, done it before, want to see what an event like that is like, uh, one is coming up in Memphis uh, June 2nd. You can go to nagafighter.com. That's N-A-G-A fighter.com. And on that website, you can not only check out their jiu-jitsu side of things, it's a two-piece website. So you can go to the other half and check out Naga Submission Fighting. They actually have a full MMA uh, shows that go around the country as well uh, that are going to be you're going to find a lot of these young fighters. Uh, one thing that's really awesome, it's kind of like checking out a local band, and then you see them explode on MTV later on. You go, wow, I remember watching that band for five bucks down there at the uh, the Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. Man, those guys were awesome. Well, Rock you know and what? Roll Chicken Shack? Yeah, downtown. You're serious? Yeah. I've never heard of, of that. It's right, on, it's right downtown on the Strip. I've never. I, I've, I've walked in there once. It's a groovy looking place. I've never heard of it yeah. here in Arkansas. Here yeah. in Little Rock. Yeah. Okay, we got to check out the Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. We're gonna go down to the Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. We're gonna broadcast live from there next. We Friday. should. <laughs> we we should definitely <laughs> broadcast live. But see what happens is like you go to these fight these fights, uh, pro fight. People just paid twenty five dollars to see David Lindsay and Thomas Gifford go to war. And I'm, I, there's no telling that either one of them fighters could end up in a really huge production down the road. And you could sit back and go, wow, I watched that young guy fight in Little Rock. Now, that's not saying that we don't want uh, the Little Rock fights and, and, and Kingdom Promotions to become as big as the UFC. We would love that. Anybody would love that. That's not the whole point. But that's not the point. That's it. We're, we're trying to make sure that Kingdom Promotions gives fighters a chance to display their skills as a debut fighter or as a 10 and 0 amateur to a to a beginning professional fighter until we can't afford them anymore that's what it is we get to the point where i can't afford some of these people kim hamby has championship titles I, i'm getting to the point where she's she's has so much demand and so much value that i can't put her in a show here in little rock I mean, josh black was the same thing he was getting to the point where he was getting so much demand that the that the money was exceeding the the what was producing here in the state and that's great for them that that just like justin frazier he's on that teeter-totter right now mike wessel's the same thing we had mike wessel a couple times he's fighting he just fought on a uh, he fought professional boxing down in um, tunica a couple weeks ago he just won and you know he's getting to the point where we can't afford him justin frazier's fought on bellator um i think ufc is calling him so Joel Silva is looking after him, and this is a guy who just won the, the, uh, the heavyweight championship title here in Arkansas back in June. So, I mean, it's, it's blowing up. So, but anyway, we are going to, uh, we're going to take some calls here in a little bit. I'm going to give out the phone number uh, when we do this. I'd love to hear you guys uh, shout out. We're going to um, call this the fanfare. So um, what we want you to do is I want you to call in. I'm going to give you the number. Just call in. Craig's answer the phone. I just want you to shout out where you're from, what your name is. Thanks a lot for calling. We just want to see how many states are listening to us. We want to see who's listening to us all over. Give us a shout out. Um, so at 1030, what time do you have, Craig? Right now, I've got uh, 1028. Okay, that's what I got. Yep. So let's give it a couple minutes. Uh, throw out the phone number, will you? Phone number. You can reach us on area code 501-492-5576. That number again, 501-492-5576. Save that in your phone, 492-5576. Save it in your phone. And uh, this is what we're going to be doing every Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We are going to try and make this show a weekly. It's already a weekly show. We're going to try and make this a daily show. So through your support, um, we're going to be able to grow this. When the businesses know that we're doing this and we're going to be able to give them exposure and we're giving these teams and gyms and fighters and coaches exposure, exposure for the for the MMA um, in Arkansas, this is going to blow up thanks to you guys. So, And, and I, got, I just got a text from Matt Smith, Brown Belt Matt Smith, one yeah. of my boys at Nemesis Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, it's called Sticky Fingers Rock oh, okay. and Roll Chicken Shack. Okay, I know Sticky Fingers. I've yeah. never heard of it, Rock and Roll. Yeah, if you look at it, it says Sticky Fingers Rock and Roll Chicken Shack. Oh, okay. the name of the place. Okay, Sticky Fingers, <laughs> I know. We had an after party there <laughs> when we had a show down on the river. Matt, thank you, sir, for that wonderful text. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least at least they're looking out for us, so we don't sound like fools on the air. That's right. That's definitely right. And, and there's a, there's a groovy little feature that I pulled up. Uh, if you go to Facebook on our page uh, on the fifth round on an insights thing, I can tell you where people are listening from because it actually breaks it down. And we right now have listeners from Mesa, Arizona, Sherwood, Arkansas, Arizona, Arizona, Arkansas. 
Columbia, Tennessee, Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Brothel, Washington. Brothel? Brothel? Oh, bo- Bothell, Washington. Okay, that's That's better. it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, North Charleston, South Carolina. Ben, it's going. We're going nationwide, baby. Another well, piece I hope of this info. Thing blows up, especially with, you know, being on klrga80.com, being able to stream. Um, somebody Facebook me and said they can't stream on their iPhone. Okay, here, here's a big thing. Now the iPhone's a little bit different, and one thing they need to do is go to tunein.com and type in klrg if they're using like an iPad, or, or if they have a Mac. And we got another caller. All right, let's 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 get her a shout out. It's fanfare. Let's call in. Where are you from? Hey. Go ahead, call her. Yes, no, Arkansas, it's Ariel Magnus. Ariel, ring girl extraordinaire. <laughs> How are you? Good. Also, Vince is listening, too. Vince Hill. Yes. Is he here? Is he there? Uh, he just walked out the door. Were you guys at the fights? Yes. Was that amazing or what? Yes, it was amazing. I loved it. It was unbelievable. Well, thank you for calling yes. in. Russellville? Yes. Russellville. We've got to throw that on our list. Russellville. <laughs> wow. They're coming in. we gotta, we got to find Russellville. All right, let's go. Fanfare. Call us in. Read up the While numbers. we're waiting on calls, too, uh, another huge signing this week. Roger Gracie has signed with the UFC. Hodger. Hodger. And he's actually pronounced it Roger in, for, for the United States. <laughs> no. Another caller. Because uh, we have to say our R's. That is <laughs> Go ahead, caller. Mr. Kirby, Mr. Holman here. Hey, Mr. Howard Holman. How are you, sir? Great, sir. Where Thank are you calling you from? Hey, I just wanted to let the listening audience know, I don't know if you're conveying uh, well enough your true passion for, for the sport and your true desire to promote it. Um, I have a 7-year-old, 9-year-old that Mr. Kirby's been training for over a year, and he is phenomenal, and his true passion for the sport shows up every day when he's got adults waiting to train and he goes another 10 or 15 minutes with the kids because he's so wrapped up and you need to convey or I need to convey his true passion and when he says the money's not important he's meaning that from his heart well thank you sir Uh, maybe that just means I have no concept of time either (laughs) (laughs) well you don't know how much we appreciate it and you're awesome well thank you so much thanks for calling in too sir All right. All right. bye bye right on that's the love. We already have listener love. See, I had some love. Nathan brings a lot of love. <laughs> I'm a big guy. I have a, a lot big... of love to give. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest or the most softest. You know Th- that's that it, man. That's it. That's why we marry small women because they like us. <laughs> oh, you're my big teddy bear. I love you. I know you. it. <laughs> it was funny when I was, when I was telling people about this. This was huge news for me. You know, I've been down here. In, uh, I've been in Arkansas for three years. Um, moved down here, you know, I, I moved down here for one reason. I had a, a, a dream. Um, I had something that nobody else had. Um, I, I was really excited about this, you know. Um, you know, I had, I was fighting in Iowa. I had my gym in Iowa. I had taekwondo schools. I was playing semi-pro football. I mean, you just name it, jack of all trades. But, you know, I, I really wanted to grow this MMA curriculum. I knew I had something. And, um, and it's funny, as, as the more I got down here, of course, to promote my MMA curriculum, the less I actually did my MMA curriculum. You know, I started promoting the shows. I started teaching Taekwondo. I'm teaching MMA. I'm not promoting any MMA curriculum. It's not going anywhere. Doing any, but I'm meeting all these people. All these people are pouring out. I've been able to go on television and radio shows just to talk about MMA, not my curriculum. That's not it. I've got a whole organization waiting to explode in my hands. They don't want to talk to me about that. They want to talk about MMA. So I go on the air with Sean and Wally. Amazing, you know? And this is where I've been wanting to do. I, want, I produced a TV show off of our, our, you know, the fights that we used to have. I want to do that again. This is all about education. And so, I, Craig, once again, this is amazing to partner up, to be able to co-host the show, the fifth round, every Friday. Fans, thank you for listening. We're going to give you more meat. We've got somebody calling in. Um, I told them about 15 minutes. That was 15 minutes ago. So we're going to get Caleb on the phone. He's going to talk to us a little bit about um, Carlos Condit, Nick Diaz. Um, they're going to have a rematch, or they're talking about the rematch. He's got some nitty-gritty. He knows some good people. Um, but I just want to say thank you guys for supporting MMA. Thank you for supporting me the last three years that I've been here. Treat me like I'm a true Arkansan, Ar- Ar- Arkansan, and I'm not. 
but you guys treat me like uh, I'm family, and I just my amen to I'm that. Humbled. Yes. I literally I moved here three years ago. Like it's coming up on exactly three years ago that I moved in this state, and uh, uh, I'll give it one thing: I, there is such thing as Southern hospitality, and the state of Arkansas has definitely uh, laid that out for me. Uh, since I've been here, it's been a phenomenal opportunity to be in this state, uh, to now be on the air here in the Little Rock area and, and actually all over Arkansas. It's just been phenomenal, and I really greatly appreciate everybody. Yeah. Uh, we have another caller. <coughs> Go ahead, caller. Hey, this is Vince Hill out of Russell, Arkansas. Hey, Vince. What's going on, Mr. Kirby? How hey, are you, sir? respect for what you're doing. Thank um, you. Hey, I just wanted real quick to say uh, I'm training with the uh, – Shane, the Flying Squirrel, Irwin, oh. anyone in the Russell area, come check us out. We're a small group right now, but we're getting bigger and stronger. Uh, that is that is the basis of MMA. We're a small group, but we're getting stronger. The whole entire the whole entire state. We're just going to grow, and we're going to get stronger. Um, Shane, I plan on ho hopefully ha having Shane fight in Cabot or Conway. Um, at the next show, so he told me he wasn't ready for this February one, but is he training hard? He's training hard every day, and by the way, your show this weekend, amazing show, packed crowd. It was a really, really good vibe. Thank you. That was awesome. It was. It was an amazing show, but I have amazing people that support it, too, so, I mean, I, I, take, I take no credit for this. I couldn't have done it with all the people around me, but thanks a lot, Vince. You know, the, yes, the thing is, Craig, is this training that, um, you know, I'm talking about Shane not being trained and not being ready. It's different now. You know, when I first moved here, I went to a fight. <laughs> I don't know if I've been able to say this on air before, but I'm sitting in the crowd. I'm watching a fight. Um, it, I mean, it wasn't a show. You know, it was just, you know, a cage and a light. Um, I'm watching this show, and there's a guy in front of me, and I think he's got a wife beater on, um, <laughs> you know, boils and pimples all over his back. He's got a little mullet, and he's got his hair in a ponytail, and he's got a beer in one hand. He's eating a cheeseburger, and he is screaming at the cage. His brother was in there fighting. I mean, screaming at the cage. And so I'm watching more fights. I'm watching more fights. I'm nah, not even 45 minutes later. This guy is in the cage fighting. It was his turn to fight. Oh, wow. That's what I moved to Arkansas. And that's <laughs> the, I'm like, okay. Right that's... on. Time for things to change. Yeah. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to break real shortly. On the other side, Caleb Plank. We've got a good little controversy talk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a call here in just a second. Uh, we're going to go to break. We'll be right back with more action right here on the fifth round. Ultimate Fitness in Jacksonville is your one-stop shop for all of your fitness needs. Located at 1108 Redmond Road in Jacksonville, Ultimate Fitness now has a dietitian on staff and is offering new classes such as Zumba, aerobics, as well as a dynamic self-defense class that incorporates mixed martial arts and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. All ages welcome. Ultimate Fitness is under new ownership and is now the premier place to train and get fit in the Jacksonville area. Call us today at 501-982-4500. That's 501-982. 982-4500. Ultimate Fitness. Isn't it time you changed your life? Kickskin, the premier MMA and Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear company in the world today, is now the official fight gear of me, Craig Anthony, and my show, The Fifth Round. Since 1994, Kickskin has brought to the world the best in jiu-jitsu geese, fight short, rash guard, the original number one rated Valley Tudo glove, men's and women's apparel, and much, much more. Christine Cyborg Santos, Matt Serra, Kendall Grove and Ben Henderson are all part of the Kickskin family, and you can be too. Call today at 888-KIKSKIN. That's 888-545-7546. Or go to kickskinmartialarts.com to get the gear that the pros use. Kickskin. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, back to the fifth round. Man, it's been a knockout show. Already. We're already 40 minutes deep. <laughs> That's crazy. This show, I'm telling you right now, because we have so much in the, in the, in the upcoming weeks uh, beyond just uh, mixed martial arts that we talk about. We, we're going to end up talking about individual martial arts. Uh, we, we're going to end up bringing in some good coaches, uh, fighters, students. You know, the proof is in the pudding. If you have students that come in here to tell us about your product, that's worth way more than just the teacher going, oh, yeah, man, I teach this, I teach that. Really? You know, I, I love going to, you know what I like watching when I go to Naga tournaments? I love watching the white belts because that's, 
you know you can have one or two great black belts around your school and stuff but the proof is in the pudding and how and how good are those young white belts and those blue belts uh because that's that's the defining area because you're gonna have more white belts in a school than anything uh 65 percent of all people that reach blue belt quit they quit well it's the same thing in uh, taekwondo you know i've been in taekwondo pretty much my whole life and um you see on the floor white orange and yellow and those are huge classes the basic class or you know they call them black belt club classes but white orange and yellows they are so big and then camel green and purple it's maybe a per percent you know a quarter of those and then the higher ranks it's so difficult to stick when you know no matter how hard the training is um but you know two years three years four years before you're going to get that belt you know that goal that's it jujitsu is even tougher because you go from white to blue in what two years <laughs> It, it, year and yeah, a half yeah, to two years. Yeah, it all depends on the fighter. But yep. I mean, you could, in, in some programs, you can do it up to eight months. You can get a blue belt in yep. eight months, or it takes two years. And then from blue to purple, two years. Two years. You know, that's hard it's hard to sit there long, and see yep. a stripe every six months. Yep. But On the line right now, Caleb Plank. Good morning, sir. Uh, how's it going, guys? How's it going? <laughs> I love this guy. He's an Amishman. <laughs> I, am, I am the Amish MMA coach. It gives me secret ninja powers. We all know. It's cool. Did you see him at the cage? Oh, man. He's man, so it was off the chain Saturday night. But right now, there's still a, there's still a big controversy going on in, in the UFC. Now, it's kind of a finalized controversy because Nick Diaz uh, happened to fail a, a <laughs> urinalysis test for marijuana. But Carlos Condit versus Nick Diaz what was your take on the fight itself? Well, I mean, you got to look at it from a strategy point of view. I mean, Condit has been racking up wins against some really high-level fighters. He's been doing a good job. And, like, in that fight, he played it smart. You know, he won on the stats. He, he, won, on, he won on everything. And when you look at people, you know, talking rematch, it's like, yes, does there need to be a rematch? He's waiting for GSP to get his stuff together, so... Why not, you know? And, and then, of course, you know, testing positive for the marijuana issue, it threw it out the window. You know, this is his second offense. So, you know, Diaz is going to be out of the picture for probably a year. I mean, we all know how the Nevada Athletic Commission works. But uh, as far as the fight, I mean, with Condit, I think he played a perfect fight. I don't know. What did you think, Kirby? Um, well, okay. This goes back and forth. You talk about... Um, somebody just kind of ran the whole entire time. Somebody just kind of slung punches the whole entire time. Somebody had better wrestling. Well, somebody never got a takedown. This is what it kind of boils down to. And this is what it boils down to me. Look, I want to ask you something before we go on to that. This, this reminds me of the conversation we were having with Thomas Gifford and David Lindsay. What do you think about Carlos Condit, Nick Diaz, having an immediate rematch between the two of them? No fights in between. Just, I mean, you think that's... You think that's a positive thing? That it's negative. You think it's good or you think it's bad? And for whom? I think that uh, Nick Diaz needs it more than anybody just because, man, he got beat. I mean, it just – I've seen Nick Diaz embarrass high-level strikers because yes. of his style and his strategy. That was not the he same Nick him. Diaz. You know uh, – Probably because he was high, but <laughs> – Exactly. It's like, I mean, he gets in there, he's just hand slapping, he's grabbing your wrist. I mean, it just, he's walking forward and just, I remember whenever, uh, even whenever he was fighting an elite, you know, I mean, just some of the fights, you're just like, how is he, how are people, everybody's always asking, how are, how are people letting him do this to them? But, man, when you got him in front of you, it, it's a different beast. Yeah. Does the rematch need to happen? No, I don't think so. Condit controlled the fight everywhere it went. I mean, 68 leg kicks, you know, are you going to win off leg kicks? No, but he jacked him in the face. I mean, it's like, dude, I mean, you look at, you look at the fight with Diaz walking forward. Yes, but I can walk forward into a car, and the car's going to win. So, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Okay, so you're saying you don't think it's smart to have a rematch for them? I don't think it – well, I'm not saying it isn't smart. GSP is going to be out till probably close to the end of the year. I mean, I've been – I've, I've had some communication. I heard that maybe he's pulling out a little bit early, you know, because rehab's going well. Yep. But it, it's like Carlos deserves a title shot. I mean, from what he has done with the guys he's been beating, he deserves it. And if anything, a rematch with Diaz would, one, make him some extra money because it would be a, a high-profile fight. Anytime the circus comes to town, yep. people are going to say, 
So Diaz, you know, part two, he's going to be talking trash and how, you know, that guy ran all the time and, you know, and punched him in the face a bunch. And, you know, it'll be just, it'll be crazy. But as far as do I think that it's a necessity to clear the air, I don't. I mean, you watch the fight, you look at educated people that understand MMA and how it's scored. I mean, do I think that Carlos maybe want a chance to finish Nick? Well, yeah, I'm sure he's all over it. I mean, you look at any of his interviews, he agreed to the rematch, even before the marijuana thing was known. He said, yeah, dude, I'll do it. I'll beat the brakes off of him. Yeah, I, this is what I believe. This is honest. I think Connett's a great fighter. Well, I think Nick Diaz did not show up and fight the night, the, the kind of fighter that Nick Diaz is. I, I just That was not Nick Diaz in that cage. I, I've got two points to make on this fight. Uh, first point, if from a judge's perspective, what I watched, I believed that Nick Diaz won three out of the five rounds. I believe Nick Diaz pushed the pace. And only coming from, from my view... Watching somebody back up the entire time means you are giving up control of the cage. You are uh, who's pushing the pace, who's backing up. Now, on the other end of that, though, if Nick Diaz would have been throwing more punches than he was japping his jaws while he's inside the cage, quit talking smack. Quit throwing your hands up and doing the smacky stuff. I mean, it's funny. It's cute for about a minute, but get to work. If you were going to beat him, beat him. You know, people say, well, how could you stand there and, you know, let him do that? Well, a lot of people ask the same thing about how could you let Anderson Silva just dance in front of you and beat the snot out of you? <laughs> and but he does it. Fall backwards and <laughs> knock out Forrest fall, Griffin? Yeah. Okay. You know, we, we ask that all the time. But, of course, we're not that fighter in the cage. You know, we're not that one. We've all had our experiences in the cage, but we don't, we don't know what it's like to be Vitor Belfort and to stand there in the cage going for a title against Anderson Silva. That is a level that we just don't know. <laughs> so and that's the thing, like, with the Nick Diaz Condit fight is you just got to think about how calculated that Condit was. <clears throat> because, I mean, you know, yeah, Diaz was walking forward, <clears throat> but every step that Condit took backwards, you know, was he would usually score. Yeah. Well, the, and that's – here, we'll, we'll, we'll lay down the rule – right now today that we will stick by forever and a day and it is this never leave anything to the judges oh my god throw it down if you want to sit there and not have any controversies anymore finish your fights I agree. It, that, that's just it get finished or do some finishing submissions and knockouts you know i i love the fact that that uh dana white has come out and said you know what all Main events, even la even the other night against the, it the, should have been against should have Diego, been, in Diego Sanchez should have been a five round fight. Give it, let it go as the, to far to the distance as possible. It would have went five rounds with Diego, but there's other fights that you got Brock Lesnar in there. It's not gonna go five rounds. It's gonna go one round maybe. So, yes, um, I guess hey, that'll help a few of the answer. fighters out. I got the answer. Whenever it looks like it's going to be close, just start throwing some beer bottles in there. <laughs> listen, okay, listen. The Arkansas State Athletic Commission states <laughs> in Article 1, Section 3.5, <laughs> that we have to have paper cups 150 feet from the technical zone. I can't even have a bottled water near the cage, people. Okay? There's something wrong with this. They think we have a weapon, and they're calling it a bottle of Nestle water. That's it. That's awesome. No, it's not I awesome. It. I it's love crazy. it. Regulation is glorious. It is so much fun. <laughs> Who made him call in? Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Nathan Kirby, how the F are you not fat anymore? Dude, I used to make fun of you all the time. What happened? What happened? What? Well, come wow. on. Are you kidding me? Wow. It's called self-control. Every time I saw you, I get to go, like, poke the Pillsbury Doughboy. I was like, not hey, that. Wow. I was not fat, Caleb. Wow. I was just thick. You were just big. <laughs> big like a Buick, right? Okay, I understand. Big like a Buick. Hey, 35 <laughs> pounds, baby. Wow. Yeah, that's oh, like, man. I saw that's you like the say, other That's day, like saying that Brock like, Lesnar is pleasantly plump. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you still got the blingy pants and the white fluffy pirate shirts and the crazy hair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, getting dogged wow. on first show, man. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> that is awesome. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb, man, we greatly it. appreciate the call this morning, sir. 
We'll be no in problem. touch, Caleb. We'll be in touch, Ben. Have a great day. All right, put him, put him on the do not call list. <laughs> well, sure one thing, I, and I was getting, man, it's, it's been crazy. My phone's blowing up the entire show. People wanting us to talk about different things. One thing we will be discussing, there, there's so many aspects to our show uh, because there's so, depth of no, so much depth of knowledge uh, in our backgrounds of, of mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu, health and fitness. Uh, a huge, huge thing that we're going to be hitting on over the, ne- over the upcoming weeks is health and fitness. You bet. Nathan Kirby just said he lost, he's lost 35 pounds. I'm currently cutting weight for a tournament because I am competing at the Naga tournament at the end of next month. And uh, I've got to be down to 199. Uh, I weighed in two nights ago at 223. So I've got six weeks. And, and, and my, my weight has been gradually coming down softly. Yeah. It's, and it's nice because I'm planning on not going, okay, well, weigh-ins are tomorrow, and I'm still 12 pounds off. Let's do some cutting. Oh, you mean like my fighters did? Friday yeah. Night? Yeah. yeah. I, I've been there. Uh, I, I did fight at, I fought at a Naga two years ago, and I cut 16 pounds in 24 hours. And I'll tell you right now, I was completely gassed uh, as I went on to the mats. Uh, I, I almost embarrassed myself. I mean, I was up four points to nothing with 30 seconds left to go in my, in my first fight of the tournament. And uh, got Ezekiel choked while I had the guy in my guard. I was so exhausted. I couldn't hold nothing. And so we're going to definitely be talking about uh, weight loss, about different diet and exercise programs. But... Nonetheless, it is, we're talking about the healthy ways to do it. Yeah. We're not going to sit there and go, look, there's a billion. There are. There, there's a ton of pills you can go pop right now and go drop weight like a crazy mad person. But look, uh, I want you to talk to your doctor before you ever start something. If you're an extremely overweight or obese person, and we want you to get as healthy and as fit as possible, and we are here for you. We really are. But I want you to get clearance from your doctor before you start just jumping into anything because I don't want you to run out, especially don't run out and just buy garbage and start shoveling pills down your throat to try to get lose weight. That's not the way to do it. It's a lifestyle. Once you realize you make that change, that's when everything else is going to come. But you've got to be so determined that you are done looking like this. You're done feeling like this. You don't want these clothes anymore. You don't want to act this way anymore. You're tired of coming home being exhausted because you say, I'm too tired to work out because I work all day. You're too tired to work out because you're so sedative um, all the other time. You just sit there. So what, what we were trying to do at the first of the year, I started this whole entire uh, the New Year's resolution. It was a 90-day challenge I tried putting people on. I tried getting them to give 90 days to change their life, whether it's a new workout program, whether it's a new fitness program, whether it's a new diet program, whatever it is, just put yourself on this. Give yourself 90 days to see how far you can come. You can email me um, at kirbymma at gmail.com. Um, I've got a website that will help you guys out, so email me. I'll give you that information. We can help you out um, through your workouts, through your training. Um, we're here to work um, to help fighters, to find places to train. Um, to, for women, you know, some women don't want to train over here because they're not into being hardcore fighters. That's great because we've got classes for that, that we're training FBI and, and TV anchormen and, and women. And uh, If you want to work out and you want to get in shape, we're going to help you. We're going to have people on here. We're going to have guests. Uh, next week, we've got a um, fitness person lined up um, to come in here and talk, and we're going to help you with that. So um, um, we're here behind you. It's, it's, it's a huge thing. That, that's, he hit it on the head perfectly. Uh, what we do is a lifestyle change. Look, I don't put alcohol in my body. I don't use tobacco of any sort. I don't take illicit drugs. I don't put aspirin in my body if I don't have to. Period. Uh, Coke and nothing but, I mean, or heroin. Just, I mean, just, that's a bad thing. Nothing illegal. Uh, uh, You know, if I can avoid taking any type of prescription drug, I would do that as well. Um, But it is a lifestyle change. When you're walking through the grocery store and you're buying your, uh, when you're buying your groceries for the week or just for a couple of days, be a lot more (sighs) mindful about what you are doing when you walk in there, uh, and when you pick up a box out of, a, uh, out of the refrigerator section, look what's in it and realize if you can't read or don't, can't even pronounce some of the ingredients that are in some of the foods that you're about to put in your body, don't do it. Don't put the excess garbage in your body uh, because I, I will always resort back to, look, uh, to using this. <coughs> Think of your body like an NHRA funny car that runs at 8,000 horsepower. You are not going to take, 
you know, 87 octane unleaded gasoline garbage and put it into an 8,000 horsepower vehicle. No, you have to put the best thing in the world, nitromethane. Okay, so what is your body? Well, how do you expect, how do you want to respect your body? Do you want to put garbage in your body or do you want it to run as efficiently as possible? You know, your body will naturally be at a certain weight. Don't come to me saying, okay, well, I know I'm 350 pounds. This is natural. Now, I'm naturally this way. I'm big boned. I have this excuse and that excuse. Look, that 2000, irritates me. I'm just going to tell you now, people. I yep. cannot stand that excuse. Yep. 2012 a- was a year of no excuses. I see it on on, on uh, The Biggest Loser, which I'm a huge fan of guys like Bob Harper and, and some of the big fitness guys that, will, that are here to help you change your life. And, here, and, and that's what we are trying to do. And we're on a local level. <clears throat> you can contact us and come see us at any time. And check us out on the fifth round on Facebook. You can call us. If you're out there and you want to advertise on our show, you can do so. You can call me, 501-772-0544. My, that, and that, you can contact me right there. Nathan, do you have a number they can contact you? Because you can contact either one of us uh, to, to start advertising as well. It's 501-941-0533. I can also help you with your exercise. I'm going to put a picture on Facebook on the uh, fifth round. <laughs> I'm laughing already because it's pretty funny. So I'm going to put a picture on the fifth round, and I'm hoping this, this encourages you. So I'm, I'm going to put this on here just because it encourages you, okay? See, and uh, I've had guests like my friend Tina Hunt, who's back in Phoenix. Uh, she is a wonderful, wonderful example of a woman who was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Uh, who was 300 pounds, her, at her heaviest, 295 pounds. <clears throat> uh, she is now 150 pounds and has the body of a goddess because she did nothing but work. And she didn't go off and just, oh, I'm going to go get my stomach stapled. Now I'm going to go to, no. She watched what she puts in her body. She slowly and gradually built a room in her house piece by piece for weights in a weight room uh, to take care of herself. You have to make the sacrifices. You do. You have to go. Well, last night Nathan posted his first enjoyment of a meal was sushi. One of my favorite things ever. Yeah. But how long was it that you literally you stopped and you sacrificed those pleasures yeah we, you i'm know not what? saying i'm not saying that sushi's bad for you no no no, it's not but it was the the tempura that i had along with it <laughs> and it was it, it wasn't just the food that i fasted on i january 2nd i decided to start a fast and this fast was not just on on certain foods i mean it was on certain foods but it was a financial fast i wasn't a- able to go out to eat i was not able to go out to the movies I-, I decided to do a financial fast for my family to be a better steward of my money um i went on a sweet fast i could not have any sugar any sweets anything like that i couldn't have doritos because i wanted them so bad i couldn't even have cheez it's i'm standing in the closet looking at them like well i wonder can i have those well i'm fighting myself if i have to fight myself that much i know i wanted them so i took them out of my body Six weeks, I had no caffeine, I had no pop, I didn't get any diet energy drinks, I, nothing. I didn't get to go out to eat, so finally, here I do, I, I get to sit down, we're at, we're at Tokyo House, and I'm eating sushi with my boys, and, um, and I had a little bowl of uh, ice cream that came out with it, they give you ice cream at the end, it was <laughs> chocolate, mint chi- chocolate mint chip, or, oh, but I'm telling you, six weeks of fasting was crazy, it was crazy, but it's over, and I'm glad. But while you, de- but while you did that, your body naturally detoxes. Yes. You will feel so much better. You know, look, six weeks. That is a blink of an eye in time. Six weeks is nothing. Uh, you want to try it's that gonna again? It's going to be, well, <laughs> when you're done with it, you could turn around and go, wow, how much of that li- is your life, though? Six weeks yeah. of your life is, is nothing. Guys prepare for MMA fights on usually a 90-day training camp to get ready for a professional MMA fight. 90 days and what are they doing for those 90 days i'm watching every carb i put in my body everything i eat everything i drink and they're good to sit there and and get so focused on what they've got going on ladies and gentlemen incredibly we are out of time i am about to cry i want another hour <laughs> i know i do too and this is what we got to do we, we got to make sure that we have a time slot for our fans to call in Okay, um, we got a lot of MMA fans. Okay, and they want to ask questions. Um, I, you know, of course, my phone is blowing up too. So um, let's get a time for these fans to call in. We're going to let you ask your questions. We're going to answer them on the air. Um, we're also going to talk about fitness. We're going to have this set up next week to talk about local MMA and also regional MMA. So next week, 
10 a.m. start tuning in early. Uh, you can stream us on the web. Give them the directions again, Craig. Expect a win uh, for the website. By knockout or Here's the That's fifth round go for, but, uh, on, on five, Facebook. Five round of, of, uh, yeah, ready to go. Live streaming. Live streaming. KLRG880.com. Peace out. Into the fifth round for today. Nathan, you rocked. Later, guys.